All right, folks, so I wanted to record a quick video uh, for the FOR 106 class to be able to show you uh, the steps that you're going to go through as you're doing the blood and body fluid identification lab. Uh, first thing I want to show you is the things that you need from your lab kit and then some things you're going to need from your home uh, to be able to do this lab. So in your lab kit, uh, you're going to have a test tube rack. You're going to need at least one of these disposable uh, glass test tubes and then uh, one of these disposable pipettes. Uh, in your lab kit, there are also going to be two of these lancets, which you're going to use to poke your finger to get a little bit of blood as a known sample. Uh, there's also this luminol kit. It's a spray bottle. And then it has this powder that comes with it. And then there are going to be three of these uh, seminal ID test kits. And then you should have about five of these blood ID test kits um, that you're going to use. Uh, you may want also from your lab kit to use your tweezers. It might be helpful. These tweezers are forceps. Uh, from home, some things you're going to need. You're going to need uh, several just uh, paper towels. Or if you don't want to use paper towels, you could use just pieces of like cotton cloth, like an old t-shirt if you wanted to cut up and use it. You're going to need some Q-tips. You're going to need a pair of scissors and a marker, and then you're going to need a few uh, household condiments, actually. So some ketchup. You're going to be testing a, a stain made from some ketchup. Uh, you're going to be testing uh, some uh, barbecue sauce. So I got this little barbecue sauce packet, I think, from Jack in the Box. So you can go get that or if you have some barbecue sauce. You're going to need some raw hamburger uh, and some salsa. You'll also need a little bit of bleach. Uh, and some lemon juice and either some cauliflower or an apple. Uh, so one of the things you need to do before you actually start doing your testing is to make your stains. Uh, and the reason is, is we want to actually make our stains on our either our paper towel or our cloth and we want the, the stains to dry before we test them. We don't want to test wet bleach or wet barbecue sauce or wet salsa. So what we want to do is we want to make our stains and then let them sit for maybe an hour or so so that they dry out. Um, so what one of the stains of course we can do is uh, we want to do ketchup so you know open up your ketchup packet here and then just squeeze out you don't need a ton just squeeze out a small amount of ketchup and then you can smear it around here on the piece of uh, paper towel or cloth and so then we can set that aside so that it dries. Um, so we're going to do ketchup. So one stain is going to be ketchup. Another stain is going to be barbecue sauce. Uh, you're going to do one that's salsa. And again, you can just use a, a salsa packet from your, your Taco Bell if you want. Uh, you're going to do one that's bleach. You're going to do one that's lemon juice. And then you're going to do one that either you can do uh, apple or cauliflower. Um, and I, I think that's all the same. So again, a known blood, which I'm going to show you how to do in just a moment. Barbecue sauce. Uh, raw hamburger, you're not going to make a stain, you're actually going to swab the hamburger itself. Uh, again, ketchup, salsa, bleach, and lemon juice. And then one of the things you're going to test is saliva, but you're not going to make a saliva stain. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to swab the inside of your mouth with a cotton swab. So, um, let, let me show you how to make the known blood stain. Um, I, I made one earlier, which I'm going to test in a moment. So I, I made a known blood stain on a, on a paper towel here, which I'm going to demonstrate the testing on. But what you're going to do to, to make your known blood stain is you're going to use uh, one of these lancets. These are used by folks that have to test their blood sugar regularly if they have diabetes, for example. Um, so these lancets, what you need to do is you're going to prick the end of your finger and you're going to squeeze out just a small amount of blood which you're going to put onto uh, a paper towel or, again, a piece of cotton cloth. So what you do with the lancet is just is twist off the tip here. And there's not an exposed needle, but what's going to happen is you're going to press this against your finger and a, and a small little teeny needle is going to prick the end of your finger real quick and then you're going to squeeze the end of your finger and a little bit of blood's going to come out. But what I recommend you do is kind of shake your finger a little bit so that the blood kind of fills the end of your finger tip. And once you've done that, then you take the lancet and just push it against the end of your fingertip. A little prick there, not too bad. And then if you just kind of squeeze your fingertip, a little bit of blood comes out and then you're just going to smear a little bit of blood on the paper towel or cloth, whatever you're using. So then we have our, our little blood stain. Again, we don't want to test this right away. We're going to want to set this aside and let it dry uh, for about an hour or so. Um, 
it, it's gonna, it'll stop bleeding almost right away. You shouldn't really need a bandage or anything. It, it really only draws just a drop or two of blood with that lancet. So, uh, so you need to make your blood stain. So we have a ketchup one, we have a blood one, uh, barbecue sauce, again, salsa. Uh, we're gonna test hamburger meat, uh, lemon juice, uh, bleach, cauliflower. So, um, all right, now what you're gonna do, once you've set your stains aside, you're, you're ready to actually test those. And so earlier I, I created a, a known blood stain just like I demonstrated for you on this paper towel. And I wanna demonstrate for you the steps that we use when we use these field test kits. These are field test kits that officers or crime scene investigators use uh, out on the scene when they have a suspected blood stain. Um, we use the same chemicals in the crime lab. We just don't usually have them in these little test kits. We usually just have dropper bottles full of the, the chemical reagents. So uh, make sure you're using the right kit for the right samples. Again, a reminder, we're going to use the blood ID kits to test the known blood stain, which we just made, a barbecue stain, a ketchup stain, a salsa stain, and then raw hamburger meat. We're going to use the semen test kits to test saliva, uh, a lemon juice stain, and then we're going to test, you can choose to do either a cauliflower or an apple. Now, by the way, why are we choosing some of these substances? Some of these substances we're choosing because they kind of maybe might look a little bit like the body fluid. So for example, dried barbecue sauce and dried ketchup kind of look like a blood stain. So what we want to do is we want to check and see if they actually test positive using these same tests. And then some of the substances we're testing, it's not that they look like blood or semen, but it's that they sometimes provide false positives. So we get color changes that we shouldn't get. So we want to test some of those as well. So that's why, for example, we're going to be testing the lemon juice with the semen test because occasionally lemon juice will test positive. Of course, even though it doesn't have semen in it, it just reacts with the, the brentamine reagent, which is in the semen uh, ID test. But let's do the blood one first, so I want to show you the steps. Uh, if we look, um, and if you look at the test kit, the one labeled blood ID test kit, if we look, there's actually three little vials of liquid inside of the test kit. And that's because one of them contains a small amount of ethanol or ethyl alcohol. Uh, one of them contains a small amount of the phenolphthalein reagent, or what's called the Castlemeyer reagent. And then one contains a small amount of uh, sodium, sorry, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, the same stuff that you put on a, a cut maybe to, to disinfect it. Uh, and so uh, we're going to be breaking each of those little ampules after we add our sample to the test kit to see if we get a color change. Um, the other one, the semen test, uh, there's only actually one of them in here that has liquid, so we only actually have to break uh, and expose our sample to one liquid. But before I start doing my testing, I want to be safe, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a, a pair of disposable gloves. So I have some uh, nitrile gloves here. You can use latex gloves or whatever. These can, you can just buy these at your, uh, your local grocery store. Because I am dealing with some chemicals, for example, there's a little bit of uh, chemicals inside here. There's a brentamine reagent and the phenolphthalein reagent. We probably don't want to expose those to our skin. Uh, so it's a good idea for us to put gloves on. Uh, and then I would recommend you probably put some safety glasses on too. All right, so let's say I want to test this blood. How am I going to do that? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to take a test tube that has a little bit of water in it, and I want to moisten the end of a cotton swab. So just a normal Q-tip or a cotton swab like you might have at your house, I'm going to take, and I'm just going to moisten the end of it with a few drops of water. Just normal water is fine. Preference would be distilled water, but normal water is fine. And then I'm going to take this moistened tip of the cotton swab and I'm going to rub it against the, the stain, this dried blood stain. And a little bit of that's going to come off on the end of the cotton swab. So we can see a little bit of discoloration on the end of our swab. Okay. Now if I take my test kit, first thing I want to do is I want to pull off this little black safety clip. Don't throw it away, just t pull it off and set it aside for a moment. And then I want to open up the test kit. And then I want to take the cotton swab the end that I want to test, the one that's got the, the discoloration on it from my, from my blood stain, or my suspected blood stain. Actually, we know this is blood. We've we, we put it there. I want to put that in there. Now, it won't quite fit, so I'm going to actually take my scissors and cut the end of the swab off just a little bit. And then I can take and push that down so that the cotton swab, the end of the swab, is all the way down at the bottom because there's only just a small amount of chemical in there. I want to make sure that it, it comes in contact with my stain. So now I push that swab with my stain on it to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and fold this back over. 
and I want to put the clip back on here, this little safety clip. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the chemicals stay contained with inside this, this test kit. Now there's three vials in here. So if, as you're looking at the test kit with the label facing towards you, you want to break them from the left to the right. We're going to break them one at a time. So I'm going to break the one here on the left first. And I do that simply by squeezing it with my thumb and finger. You can hear it break. And that releases that liquid into the test kit. And I want to shake it up a little bit. It says gently agitate for about four or five seconds. Now at this point we should see no color change. It should, the, clear, the liquid should say clear. We should see no color change on the end of the cotton swab. That's just the ethanol. Now I want to break the middle ampule. So again, squeeze the middle vial. You'll hear it break. I'm going to shake it up. Now this is the phenolphthalein reagent. And at this point, again, we should see no color change. Again, we should just have a clear liquid. All right. And then I want to press and break the last one, the last ampule, the third one, the one that would be on the right. And then I'm going to shake it. And if we have blood, which we know this is blood, right? We made this stain. Then we should see, and I'm hoping that shows up on my video, that my liquid, and especially the end of my cotton swab, turns a fairly bright pink color. Well, that's an indicator that I have a positive result. So that's a positive test for the presence of hemoglobin, right? So that means that most likely that this is blood. Now, there are other substances that might turn pink as well. Those are what we call false positives. So we're going to test these other substances, the barbecue sauce, the raw hamburger meat, the ketchup and salsa, to see if they might also test positive. Now when I'm done with this, I can simply throw this in the trash. I have a little cup right here. I'm just going to use as my temporary trash container. I'm going to put it in there. So what I need to do then is I need to repeat that same process. So grab a different test kit and then repeat that same process with the barbecue. Uh, with the raw hamburger, all you need to do is take one of your Q-tips and just rub it against some raw hamburger meat and then test that. Again, test a ketchup stain and a salsa stain. All right, testing the seminal, using the seminal fluid stain is very similar. The only difference is instead of having to break three vials of liquid, I only have to break one. Well, one of the things that can sometimes give a false positive for semen is saliva. So we want to test and see if saliva will react with our test. So what we're going to do for that test is we're going to take one of our cotton swabs and we're just going to rub it on the inside of our mouth to be able to collect some saliva or spit on the end of this cotton swab. So I'm going to do that now. So get it nice and moist from the saliva from your mouth. And then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and take the, the clip off the end of my field test kit. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And I want to put the swab down there. I'm going to, again, I'm going to clip the end of it off here because it won't quite fit all the way in there. And again, I want to carefully push that swab down to the bottom so that, it, that the liquid uh, will come in contact with the end of the swab. Again, I want to close this back off and put the safety clip back on. And again, remember, on the semen test, there's only one ampule. It's just the one in the middle. It contains a substance called brentamine. And brentamine reacts with the presence of something called acid phosphatase, which is an enzyme that's found in very high quantities in seminal fluid. And so really, that's what we're testing for, is the presence of acid phosphatase. Um, so what we're going to do is we're simply going to squeeze the vial, and we're going to break it releasing the liquid. We're going to shake it up. And again, we're looking for a color change. Now, a positive test for the presence of acid phosphatase is, again, a pink color, just like the Kasselmeyer test. And what we're seeing here with the saliva is the saliva is turning kind of a pink color, which tells us then that there's a small amount of acid phosphatase in saliva. So what we're actually getting here is an example of kind of a, a false positive. Uh, we didn't actually test semen, we tested saliva, yet it still turned positive. And that's the reason why these chemical color tests like the Brentamine or acid phosphatase test or the Kasselmeyer test for blood or even some of the other blood tests like the leukomalachite green test, these are presumptive tests. They don't test for the, they don't confirm the presence of the blood or the semen, but they tell us that what we have is most likely blood or semen. So we're going to repeat that process uh, using the semen ID test. We're going to test a, a stain with lemon juice. And then we're also going to test it. You can take an apple 
and, and rub it on. So bite a chunk out of an apple and then rub it against the, the inner portion, the flesh of the apple, and it might test positive. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we record the results of our tests on our data sheet, and we're going to include that data sheet in our lab notebook. Now there's one other test that we're going to do, and we're going to test using luminol. You might have heard of luminol before. Luminol is a chemical that when it comes in contact with blood, uh, it will react with the blood and it produces what's called chemifluorescence. Chemifluorescence means a glow or an emission of light that happens due to a chemical reaction. Chemifluorescence happens, for example, in a glow stick. You might have bought a glow sti stick before. When you break a glow stick and those chemicals mix together, then the glow stick starts to glow. That, that glow is called chemifluorescence. So luminol, when we spray luminol on blood, the luminol reacts with the hemoglobin in blood and it produces a, a glow. Uh, and so for the luminol, what we're going to do is we have a, a bottle here that's, uh, I think this is an acetone-based uh, luminol. So we have a bottle full of, uh, I believe, acetone. And then we have our luminol reagent, our powder here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the safety clip off of the powder, which is labeled luminol. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully pour the liquid, sorry, the, the powder into the bottle labeled luminol. And then what I need to do is I need to take my, my sprayer and, and cap it off. Now, when you get your kit, quite often the little tube is actually a little too long. So what I did earlier is I actually cut off the end of this tube uh, so that it would actually fit better in the bottle. But I'm going to go ahead and screw my sprayer cap on. And then what I need to do is just mix it a little bit. So if you just take an inverter, I wouldn't shake too much. You don't need to vigorously shake. But if you just invert several times so that the powder and the liquid mix together to create your luminol reagent. Now, the one thing I'm not going to be able to show you here uh, in my video is the reaction. And the reason is, is because to be able to see the luminol react, uh, it, the glow that you see is actually very, very faint. And so actually we need to go into a dark room uh, to be able to spray the luminol for it to be able to glow. Because uh, in, a, in a bright room like we have here, the glow is just going to be too faint. You're not going to be able to see it. Um, I do have a, a piece of cloth that I had put some bleach on earlier that dried out, and I'm going to spray it on there, but uh, we would see a glow if the lights were off, but we're just, we're just not likely to see it here because the lights are on. So what you would need to do is you would need to take your piece of cloth or paper towel that has the bleach on it and go into like a dark closet or into a, uh, a bathroom, turn all the lights off, and, and then spray it then. Um, because otherwise you're just not going to see the glow. Now we're going to test two things with the luminol. You're going to test your blood stain, right? So we had our blood stain. We're going to test that with luminol to see if it glows. And then we're also going to test bleach to see if it glows with luminol. So you're going to put it down in a dark room and then you're just going to spritz it, kind of like you're spraying hairspray. We're going to spray it and then hopefully, if we're in a dark enough environment, we're going to see a fluorescence, a glow. It's going to be kind of a greenish-blue fluorescence or glow. And if you get a positive result, then you need to record that in your data sheet. All right, so folks, that's, that's the, the instructions for this lab. Uh, that's what you need to do to complete the blood and fluid identification lab.